start out. Uh, so welcome to the session today. Uh, my name is Karan and uh, uh, today I'll be conducting the session. The Today's session will have two major agenda points. Uh, we'll discuss what uh, MBA does for you professionally and I'll also try and help you understand what are the career options that you would have in operations, which is the field that I work in. Uh, to begin with, I'll start with a bit of an introduction. Uh, so my name is Karan. I work with uh, Cloudtail India Private Limited uh, as a senior vendor manager. Um, in terms of background, I have worked with um, Ashok Leyland in my first job stint, which was immediately after engineering. Um, I did my engineering and mechanical, then joined Ashok Leyland, uh, spent two years there. And after that, went and did my uh, MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. Post MBA, joined uh, Kraft Foods, which later became Mondelez India Private Limited. Worked there for around six and a half years. And uh, in the last six months, I've been working with Cloudtail India Private Limited. Yep. Um, okay, so to dive right into the first topic. Uh, so what does an MBA do for you, right? Uh, professionally. What an MBA does is it kind of structures the way you develop as a person and how you approach problems. The way that happens is uh, through multiple pieces that uh, happens in the MBA college. So you start with the, the basic uh, teaching methodology in MBA. So for example, in IIM Ahmedabad, it's a case study methodology that changes the very method to which you approach a problem uh, from the traditional way that we have done it in schools and in colleges. Uh, then there is the the group study activities. So what that does is it puts you in a group which you may or may not have a choice of forming by yourself. Uh, it puts you in a situation where you've got to work with team members who are very different to each other and then develop and deliver on multiple projects. Uh, that helps you um, simulate what kind of an environment you would end up in uh, post MBA. Uh, the third part of it is the various extracurricular activities that you do. So as Rahul mentioned in the post, I'm a placecomer. That was one of the extracurricular activities that we did on campus. What that again does is it's uh, it drives you to learn how to manage things yourself. It drives you to work in a very, very um, uh, tough environment where you know, you've got to manage your academics, you've got to work, manage the extracurricular and you're delivering on multiple fronts, right? It's a very good simulation of what you see in your professional world. If you worked even before MBA, you would have seen that and you'll be able to associate with it. If you haven't worked before an MBA, it's a very, very good simulation of what you would end up seeing after you finish an MBA, whether you go to work for somebody else or you start up your own organization, yeah? Uh, the last part around it is that you have very, very good professors there who will kind of guide you and they are also, again, a simulation of what happens in real environment. A lot of what you get out of the professors depends on you individually. Uh, while there are classes, you can go well over and above the classes in terms of what you want to get out of the professors. You can approach them, you can be doing projects with them, and that will kind of, again, increase your technical as well as your uh, individual skills, right? The last part of it, and probably the most important part of it, is the people in the campus. So any batch at any given point of time has maybe 200 or 300 odd people. So so you will end up having 200 or 300 odd people to interact with. That's a lot of people and you will have a lot of diversity in the batch in terms of uh, who is, you know, what they think, how they think, how they approach a problem. And since there is that kind of a diversity, when you work with them, you actually start developing perspective from a multiple fronts, right? So you look at a problem from different angles and that makes your solution much better. To the problem. So that's my take on um, how MBA helped me. Uh, again, if you approach maybe 10, 15 different people, there will be different points or different priorities that each of them have. It completely depends on how individuals have received it and uh, yeah, how, how it helps individuals is also very, very different, right? But this is probably what I would say were the top four things that uh, kind of stay with me for, uh, after campus, even after seven odd years, yeah? Okay, moving on to the second topic, uh, which is a career in operations. So, uh, so operations is basically supply chain, right? Uh, that was my area of interest. 
the first call out which i would tell everybody who is looking for a career in operations is um career in operations does not mean that you only need to know operations you have to be a rounded individual for example a person cannot excel at operations if you do not understand at least the basics of finance similarly a person cannot excel at operations if you do not at least understand the basics of sales and marketing yeah because one part of it is going to be your customer the other part of it is going to be your stakeholders right so that's important uh, if you are looking for a career in operations you should be giving some amount of time to these also and making sure you develop your skills on these fronts the second part of it in terms of career with operations what are the kind of options that you would have so you would have i will start out with the supply chain right so you have procurement to start with they are kind of responsible for uh, buying goods or services right and there is a whole whole set of processes there there's a lot of work which is happening on procurement right now a lot of organizations are looking at centralizing their procurement so that they are able to drive economies of scale which is basically buy uh, for a larger group of uh, or buy a big lot together to keep it very simple yeah uh, then there is the second part of it which is manufacturing this is the place where all the inputs that you get are converted and you get products or services as an output uh, this is the second area where you can have a career as a part of operations uh it could be at factory locations or it could be just you know that you are actually converting something in terms of a service right uh it's a it's a very very challenging job there's a lot of people interaction involved here uh and people skills become very very critical especially in the manufacturing side of it yeah the third part of it is logistics and distribution so this is the the, the end which starts after manufacturing is done so you have a whole team or you would be responsible for managing the distribution of whatever has been produced so you've got to make sure it's available in the right place at the right time and that's a very very challenging ball game uh considering a country like india so just imagine you could be manufacturing in one location and you're responsible for making sure material is available across all the states at the right point of time yeah so keeping a tab planning a strategy around how you're going to replenish that kind of work falls into this particular bucket yeah the third part the fourth part of it which i will pick up on is the planning function so you have a whole team which would sit down and try and match the kind of demand that we are getting with the kind of supply that we can give that's the whole planning function part of it uh, they need to have they need to be able to set up their network they need to be able to know they have to know what kind of capacities that they have what is it that they can service what is it they cannot service how do they plan for the serviceability in the future so supply planning and network planning are a major major function uh, a simple example of what goes into network planning could be what your manufacturing uh, footprint in india could look like 5 years down the line so you know your demand is going to increase by x percent year on year so where all do you want to set up your factories what what should be the capacity of each factory right and planning for that investment that's the planning function right the th the final layer which i will add into this bucket is your product change management or the product management they are called different pieces in different organizations the basic functionality here is uh, you you would be driving either uh, new product launches into the market right or you would be and you would or new services into the market uh, the key part here is you get exposure across multiple functions you are able to you work with multiple functions you understand how each of those functions works uh, you work with them to solve for any blocks that they have and try and get that launch out in the market as soon as possible or within a stipulated timeline right depending on your strategy so that's your final floor function so these are the five floor functions where you would be doing you know work which you could translate and see happening in real time the last part of it is a strategy function so there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of teams which work on strategy so that part of it is the the layer above all of this so they kind of develop what kind of teams you should have and where you should be going in yeah okay so um that's the basic that i had if there are any questions feel free to type it in and i'll try and take it up as we go along uh okay so looking at the first question which is what kind of people should go for career in operations 
I think the first part of the question is that um, when you're doing your MBA or when you're doing any course, right, you would probably get a good understanding of whether you like operations, basically. You have operations courses in MBA. If you, if you seem to find an affinity to them, if you like doing those courses, I think then operations may make sense to you. That is the first part of it. Second part of it, um, when you're going to operations, you always need to be uh, ready for a lot of art grind at the beginning. Your starting role could be in procurement, it could be at a factory location, it could be at a distributor location. So all those are not the head office, those would mostly not be the head office locations, right? So you should have a bit of flexibility available. You may get lucky and start at the head office, but you should have a bit of flexibility available. Third part of it is, like I said, you should be able to understand the basics of finance and the basics of sales and marketing. Only operations will not suffice. Yeah, it will it will become a blocker for your career at a later point of time. How will digitization, automation, and analytics affect operations in future? It's a very uh, very good question. There is a lot of work which is happening on the operation side in terms of uh, automation. So the uh, um, I'm sure you guys may be reading up. Um, so for example, Amazon has started working on automating a lot of their supply planning and vendor management program. So that was pieces which were being managed manually earlier. Now it's being automated. The reason for automation is twofold. One, it works out cheaper in the long run as the labor costs go up. Two, it becomes more, it allows you to use people for more difficult pieces which don't cannot be automated. Yeah. Now, how does it affect operations? You'll find a lot of the uh, basic ground level roles getting automated out and people would be more working towards uh, refining or fine-tuning it rather than the, doing the actual operational part of it. Yeah. So for example, earlier people may have been doing the planning manually, then they slowly moved it to an Excel sheet. Now it would have moved to a system like SAP or ERP and the person who was doing the planning earlier manually would now be working on figuring out how does he optimize the SAP or the ERP system so that the planning gets more efficient. I hope that answers your question, Devayan. Uh, okay, so we have a question which is, uh, what are the types of digital marketing is fieldwork important in marketing or digital marketing has most scope? Okay, uh, so Nayak, I'm sorry, I am not a marketing expert. I would probably put, uh, suggest you touch base with a marketing expert for this. Uh, so digital marketing and uh, marketing, the, the importance of marketing part of it. I'll give you my point of view on it, but I would definitely recommend you touch base with somebody who's from a marketing background for this. Digital marketing is definitely very important. Today, all the companies are spending a lot of their budget on digital marketing. There is a separate allocation, which by itself was not there in companies five years back. Uh, so they have started putting separate budget allocations, and that budget allocation is just increasing year on year with a very high uh, in, uh, rate of increase, right? Compared to, let's say, the conventional pieces of television or newspaper, print media, etc. Yeah. So digital marketing definitely has a significant role to play in the whole piece. Uh, how does it affect and how uh, how the marketing piece will change up the basis that is something which probably a marketing person can help you understand better. Yeah. Right guys, if there is no other questions then I am happy to close out on the session. Um, you can touch base with me anytime if there is any queries on operations part of it or even otherwise I am happy to try and help out. Um, you can touch base with me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or you can reach out to Rahul and Kamlesh and they'll also put you in touch with me. Yep. Cool. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thanks a lot for joining in and hope it was helpful to all of you. Thank you.